Oscars are just around the corner. Everyone's always bu already buzzing about who's going to win. Now, I'm not a big fan of award shows normally. This year, I'm really rooting for a documentary because I think it's it's probably the best film I've seen all year. It's called How to Survive a Plague, and it's just it's an extraordinary movie. It's a very inspiring film about AIDS activists who, uh, back in the in the early 80s and, and throughout the 80s and early 90s, took on the U.S. government and widespread homophobia to get life-saving treatments, and they really changed the way. Uh, that, that drugs are brought into the system and, and have saved countless lives and really helped everybody who takes any kind of medication because it really did reform the entire system uh, for, for drug testing. Take a look. Play! 40 million infected people is a play! In the 1980s and 90s, as the death toll rose, the HIV AIDS virus quickly spread across the country in record numbers. There was nothing coming out of our government's efforts. I decided to become a full-time AIDS activist. The Oscar-nominated documentary, How to Survive a Plague, tells the gripping and powerful story of young activists like Peter Staley, who rose up and demanded that the government and pharmaceutical companies change the way drugs are approved and distributed to those in need. This government has the resources to deal with the AIDS epidemic and they won't do it unless we force them. I started to look for treatments to help save our life. Citizen activists like Peter Staley helped save countless numbers of lives and gave a voice to those who had none. This isn't going to be cured for years and years and years. I'm going to die through this. Well, Peter Staley is here, um, one of the original ACT UP activists. Thanks so much for being here. After, uh, I, I didn't know Peter, and after I saw this movie, I was so uh, overwhelmed by it and just moved by him because I really think he and so many of these other people are really heroes because they really have saved countless number of lives and, and again, have helped anybody who takes medication today in terms of the way drugs now are approved. And, and I actually reached out to Peter just because I wanted to meet him because I think he's a real hero. So I appreciate you being on the program today. Mm -hmm. you, at the at the, end, at the end of that clip, you said back then that, that you thought you were going to die. I think that's from a 60 Minutes interview you gave. Mm -hmm. um, Life-saving drugs came around in around 96. 96. And, and it saved your lives and the lives of so many people. Do you feel like people have forgotten what this entire generation of, of our fellow citizens and people around the world have gone through? I do. Uh, you know, people just take their pills these days and they don't realize that that was a hard fought battle. You weren't a, an expert scientist, you didn't know about these kind of drugs or anything, but, but you and a group of people educated yourselves, became experts, and how did you change the way the government does drug trials, approves the, these kind of medications? Well, the first thing we had to do is we had to get the government involved. I mean, when, when ACTUP came on this scene, it was already six years into the crisis, and uh, President Reagan hadn't even uh, mentioned the word AIDS. They, they didn't care that we were dying. We had to get the country to care uh, that, that, that we were dying. And, and so we did these very large public demonstrations, putting our bodies on the line at the Food and Drug Administration, at the NIH. And that changed the entire political di dynamic. We basically guilt-tripped the country <laughs> into starting to spend billions of dollars at the NIH on AIDS research. The National Institutes of Health. Exactly, and those billions of dollars ultimately are what led to the treatments that we have today. And we had to, we had to work with each pharmaceutical company to get them to do clinical trials, help them design those trials that would get the answers quickly, enroll patients quickly, and we had to entirely change the FDA so that they would approve drugs in uh, months instead of the years they us usually took. I think you're a hero also because this is a template for all activism, that we are not going to change the world and make the world a better place by being oh so very polite. You were willing to be arrested many, many times. Um, tell us about that, how you, you thought you were going to die, so you were willing to do things that other people who didn't necessarily think they were going to die would do. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it was an extraordinary, extraordinary moment in history to be a part of. It was uh, a moment that I witnessed a community rising up. We were like a family. And, and this was the gay community's greatest moment. Um, to uh, this day. To this day. We were doing all sorts of work on AIDS, not just drugs into bodies. We did housing for people with HIV. We started the first needle exchange programs for IV drug users. We did an extraordinary also caring for people with HIV AIDS exactly. because you know there were hospitals that, that were turning people away or nurses that didn't want to, to touch people. And it changed the country's perspective on 
gay men and lesbians, on who we were as a people, because we were very hated uh, in the 80s. And, and so all the stuff we've seen since then on, on all the gains and the rights, that all came out of this movement. Do you worry kids today, especially you know, young kids growing up, don't have a sense, A, of what the, the price that was paid by so many people who lost their lives. I mean, I don't know how many friends of yours you, you've lost, but I'm imagining it's uh, many. Too many. many. Too many. Um, but you, you talk to young gay kids today, and I, I, a lot of them don't have a sense, A, of what gay people went through, and also the dangers that, that they still face. Yeah. You know, I'd, I'd just say to any gay or lesbian teenager or 20-something out there, learn your history. Learn about the people that pushed against the hatred uh, and, and the ignorance and, and made this country give a damn about your lives and about your health. Um, and, and learn what came before you and how we got to this point today. Um, and also, you know, see the movie. It's not just, it's not an AIDS documentary. It's a documentary about how people can positively change the world. It's, it's incredibly very, it's inspiring. Very, I exactly. mean, I, 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 I gotta say, I, I was sort of, Sort of started watching it because I felt a sense of obligation to watch it. But it is it is a great film. I mean, it is a captivating, inspiring, and and you finish watching it and you feel you want to go out and change the world and you can in any movement. Yeah, in anything, right? Right. right. Yeah, and that's what I think is so so amazing about it. I'm so happy you're on the show because I, I just think um, you know all of us who are able to be open today, stand on the shoulders of people who came before us and, and stand on your shoulders and others. So um, thank you so much for all you've done. Thank you. Uh, again, how to survive a plague can be seen in select cities nationwide. It's also available right now on Netflix. I really recommend it. We got the final five coming up. We'll